Hi, welcome back. I'm out here fitting the chucks that I cut the back uh, mounting face in the more jig bore and uh, one backing plate. Um, I used the wall hopper head um, to face it in the horizontal milling machine with a vertical attachment. So I'm fitting these chucks, and I started by uh, getting a true um, flat face. And the next thing I have to do is work on that locating taper. Now, the 8-inch chuck, I cut it back um, uh, three and a half thousandths. And I cut the other one three and a half thousandths back, too. So <clears throat> on this one, let's have a look at it. See if I can get you moved in there pretty good so you can see it. There's a gap here, and if you get just right, you might be able to see through it to that tarp on the other side. And I go back and forth a couple times. Uh, I'd say that gap's about five thousandths, a little bit less on the bottom because of sag. I don't know, three thousandths. <laughs> so now I'm going to start trimming. Um, that taper back and I'll do it in the jig bore using the tree head so this one um, I'm gonna have to work the taper back and that'll be fun fun to see see the tree head do this okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna get around here and this stuff's heavy I'm not kidding it's kind of hard to deal with so I'm gonna back this up Get that out of here. Yeah, see, here's the the face that I get here. Okay, now I got to work the taper. Get that out of there. Ugh. Good V. Okay, here comes another one. And this one, I don't need that. Ugh. All righty. Now here is the face plate. Not. Uh, not face plate, but back plate for the uh, bison chuck D16. And uh, I, uh, I reface this in the uh, Brown and Sharp uh, milling machine. And the, uh, the, the taper seat is not bad. You see, I put some ink on it, rotated and played around with it a little bit. It could be better, but it, it, uh, it, it does what it's supposed to. And let's get that on there. Not like that. Let's get this up here. Get it kind of snug, but I can still, let me back it off a little. Just a little bit. That's more I want, I think. Okay. It just rotates. Let's get a dial indicator on here. Seems to be one on the one there. <laughs> it's a tenth reading, so um, each number is 1,000, so it's pretty sensitive. And I have a crowbar here, and I'm going to play around with this a little bit. I'll show you. Now I'm prying on it. I think you can see that indicator up on top. Yeah, I'm prying on it. Now I'm going to back it off. Let's see, that's this way. Okay, see, I got it. I'm loosening that here. If I'm doing the right way. Yeah, I'll back it up. Yep, that's okay. Let's see what it does here. See that? Let's start tightening that up. Let me get this under here like that. That would help. There we go. Okay, I'm going to start tightening it up.
Okay, it's tied against the spindle pretty much. Yeah, pretty good. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna get it pretty tight. I'm gonna go ahead and really push it on there. Okay, now I'm gonna back it off. I hope you can see this. Look it it's stuck. Get that crowbar out. Now I'll tap it. See that? That's a perfect fit. Now watch this. I'm gonna I'm gonna tighten it up again. Just kind of tight. So I can rotate it a little tighter. I've got to use the lock a little bit here. A little tighter. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's push on it a little bit. A little tighter. Let's see, yeah, this way. Okay. It keeps loosening itself a little bit here. Okay, how are we doing? Okay, now I can rotate this. Now let's watch that indicator. It's gonna hit some bumps. Okay, I'm rotating it on the uh, locating taper. There's no pins in there, right? And we're watching that indicators, see? Look at that. How much run out we got? We got, it looks like a half thousandth, three quarters. Well, let's jump down to there. See where we're going. At worst, it's less than two thousandths. And I'm not going to do anything. Now, I'm going to just like fit in a truck to your little Atlas lathe and south bins. I've had all those and really enjoyed them. You get, you know, you get the back plate on and then you do a skim cut, you know, to true it up. And I'll uh, index. Uh, it to the spindle, uh, like to the number one cam, and uh, always put it on the same way. So, this is where where I start with the chuck, and you know, keep in mind these are cheap chucks. That this one came with this machine, and the other one I bought on eBay, and uh, I think the total cost. Well, I, I I seen these bisons go locally used once for 300 bucks, so I got 500 dollars into chucks that could retail close to four thousand dollars you know over three thousand dollars so that's my motivating factor in doing everything um, that i'm doing and uh, these videos um, are kind of like bricks of information for me that um, i can refer back to as i um, advance forward always forward moving so, you know, it's like I'm dialed in a chuck. I can say, well, this chuck fits. You can look at this video sometime if you're interested. And other things like the wall hopter head, stuff like that. So I'm just kind of getting bits and pieces of stuff out there, kind of like a, like a foundation. And that's kind of uh, how this uh, machining works, I think. You know, it's just, uh, everything's just very basic, but it's just uh, a lot of little basic things you got to do to uh, um, do something like uh, get a truck running true. So this is the very beginning of uh, what I do when I'm uh, uh, fitting trucks to a lathe and rebuilding them. And uh, I got, uh, I'm going to get inside the truck. So... This part here, we're going to get the chuck itself mounted, and uh, then uh, I'm going to start getting inside the chuck, because there's some machining to do there. I've got one that needs it, and uh, but uh, I'll show you one that I've already done. This bison chuck doesn't need any uh, uh, machining inside, and I don't believe that this uh, little Cushman 8-inch does either. 
but I've got another Cushman 8 inch that does and I'll get on that one okay thanks for looking in and I'll be back with more thanks everybody goodbye